I'm Leslie Green. I've been uh, working in clay for 50 years, and um, I started when I was 16. Um, I, during that time, I've done all sorts of aspects of ceramics. I've done um, production pottery, uh, architectural scale ceramics for corporations and businesses, and I've done uh, sculpture and uh, raku, soda fire. I teach ceramics still. And um, about four years ago, I switched to painting. And um, what I learned and did in ceramics is now flowing over into what I do with color and two dimensions. Well, I first started learning ceramics uh, when I was 16. There was a music and art school uh, in the mountains of Idlewild, California, called Isamata. And I went there uh, as a teenager to study art. And it turned out the program was half art and half ceramics. And the ceramics teacher was the reason why I'm an artist today. Her name was Esther James, Esther James now. And she was a, um, just a force of nature, an incredibly creative, powerful woman. And I was fascinated by her as an artist, by her as a woman. And I realized at that time I really wanted to study ceramics and I wanted to get good at it. And Esther remained my teacher for um, 50 years and one of my dearest friends. And she passed away last week at age 91. And she taught me the most important lessons that I learned as an artist, and mostly about learning from nature, um, studying nature, having nature be one's teacher, and learning to trust yourself, and learning to allow what's deep inside, what comes up from your unconscious, to be your creative guide. Part of the work I did, especially in the 80s, was involved with animal rights, and uh, I was doing emotional statements about the human-animal connection. Uh, but throughout the years, I've done pieces also just about the beauty of animals, which uh, is very seductive to me. And I, um, I'm always coming back to uh, the beauty of animals and what animals mean to us on a deep, uh, almost buried level. That I'm very aware, aware of the fact that we are deeply connected to animals. We were throughout our evolution, and only now, the last few thousand years or since we've become civilized, we ignore that connection. And I think that's to our peril. And I think we need to be connected to non-human life. And um, so I like to maybe have the viewer connect to animals on a deeper level when they see my work. I made the horses originally in uh, about 1985. And I began uh, a series of two horses. I. Um, I was involved with animal rights at the time, and I wanted to do a piece that had the most impact that I could uh, create. And I thought, okay, how do you have impact about what's happening to animals in our world? And I thought, well, the horse, because the horse is such a powerful, beautiful animal. And I thought, okay, well, the horse coming through the wall would be a pretty powerful expression like the horses are um, uh, tormented or being uh, pursued. Um, so I thought I can't do a, I can't do a full size three dimensional horse. So I decided to do uh, a horse coming through the wall, which involved the head and separate legs and the wall painted. So it looked like it's breaking through the wall. I made initially three of them. I sold those and then made probably a total of 10 or 12. So these two in the exhibit are the last two that I have. 
I do I occasionally do commissions, and uh, it depends upon what somebody wants to have done, and um, if my heart's in it. If it's somebody, uh, recently I had somebody who lost an animal that they really loved, and they wanted me to do a, a tribute to the animal, and I could really relate to that, so I did that commission. Um, but it needs to be something that I can put my heart into. In the 70s, I, um, I was studying pottery, trying to get good at throwing pots, um, developing my craft. Um, then in 1979, I um, found this incredible studio in Santa Monica. It was um, 2,400 square feet. It had 25 foot high ceilings. It had a 600 cubic foot kiln, five tons of clay, and a forklift. I was like 29 years old. I walked in there, or, or 27, I don't know. I walked in there and I just thought, this is my future. And um, uh, it was, you know, sometimes in life you do something, you take a big leap and it works out or it doesn't. And I thought, this is my future. And so I, um, I came up with some of the money to buy, to make the first payment on the equipment and then there was rent to pay. And after six months, I was having a real hard time making the payments. I was working as a legal secretary to pay for it. And then I went to a woman who had also been interested in buying the studio, who was a screenwriter. And I said, you want to buy me out? I can't do it. She said, I'll buy half. And so at that point, we shared the expenses. And uh, uh, she was my partner. And we kept the studio for 12 years. And when I was working there um, is when I realized it was not a hobby, that uh, I was seriously into making sculpture and um, and uh, I had because I was doing an outside job I had complete freedom to make whatever I wanted to make. I've been living here uh, for 25 years and uh, we live here and my studio is here uh, right next to the house and I feel incredibly lucky to be able to live in the woods which nourishes me every single day every time I look out the window, and to have a studio, a large studio in the woods too, which is uh, kind of like my cathedral.